Here's a thought experiment by Bruce Ackerman that beautifully illustrates the intuition that justice requires equal shares. Ackerman imagines that we're space voyagers who set out to colonize a new world. Coming unexpectedly on a new world, we scan it from afar and learn that it contains only a single resource called mana. We decide to make this new world our home. As we approach the planet, the spaceship is alive with talk. Since mana is in short supply and universally desired, the question of its initial distribution is on everybody's mind. We instruct the automatic pilot to circle the planet for the time it takes to resolve the question of initial distribution and proceed to the assembly hall to discuss the matter further. Needless to say, the question of how to slice this pie has an obvious answer. Everyone agrees to equal shares. It's charming science fiction, but Ackerman has a serious purpose. In fact, Ackerman is describing a classic thought experiment. In philosophy, we call it social contract theory. Philosophers have long sought to specify principles of justice by asking what we would agree to if we came to a bargaining table to negotiate the outlines of a society in which we subsequently would live. I agree with Ackerman. If we were looking at a heap of unowned goods on the table, sitting there free for the taking, and if we were wondering how to divide it amongst ourselves, it wouldn't take long for someone to propose that the goods be divided into equal shares for all, and that would make perfect sense in those circumstances. Classic social contract theory describes a special context where there's a strong connection between the idea of equal shares and the idea of equal respect. Do you feel the power of that intuition? I certainly do. Now let me ask you, what if we take that special science fiction context and tweak one detail to make it a little bit closer to the real world? Suppose people don't arrive at the table simultaneously. Suppose people are born one by one over generations so that when a new person arrives, there are no unowned goods sitting on a table awaiting fair division. The goods have already been claimed by others and are at least partly the product of lifetimes of work. Or let's tweak a different detail to make the situation more real in a different way. Suppose that when our spaceship arrives on that new planet, turns out that a native tribe got there first and the planet we're looking at is already inhabited. Now, the ship's passengers and crew are deciding how to divide the tribe's possessions and a crew member shyly asks, what makes this our business? That's not an idle question. Ackerman wants his thought experiment to illuminate how goods should be redistributed on Earth. So are goods on Earth like manna found on an uninhabited planet? Or are goods on Earth typically goods that have already been discovered, created, possessed, and put to use by someone else? If there are no unowned goods sitting on a table awaiting fair division, we know right away we'll have a harder time knowing what to count as a new arrival's due. Maybe we still agree with Ackerman that justice requires some kind of equal share, but clearly we're in a different situation requiring a different approach. Justice would be simpler if the world were as lacking in history as our thought experiments. For better or worse though, we and our communities have histories and history matters. The point is not that the past must be respected no matter what, but that there are ways of respecting the past that enable people to have mutually respectful, peaceful, beneficial futures. When it comes to the complex question of real-world distribution of land and other resources, the default position is not equal shares. The moral default in practice is to respect the claims of whoever got there first and figure out some way of making a contribution Give those people a reason to be glad you showed up. Practical ethics isn't about dividing what previous generations brought to the table. It's about respecting what they brought to the table. Respecting the fact that their ingenuity turned our world into a civilization. If we genuinely feel obliged to treat them as equals, then let's match their contribution to the shared project of taking our civilization to the next level.